Uh, today's proceedings are a second in a series of hearings designed to assess U.S. border security efforts as well as challenges to obtaining operational control of our borders. On June 27 of this year, the subcommittee received testimony from officials at Customs and Border Protection, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and the Government Ac Accountability Office. During the hearing, this subcommittee learned about a variety of emerging threats to U.S. border security. This ranged from flaws in the government's issuance and administration of B-1, B-2 visas and the entry-exit program, in fact, the lack of an exit program in this country. The increasing number of OTMs, also known as other than Mexicans, uh, coming across the, the border, uh, particularly the southwest border. The drug trafficking organizations' extensive use of ultralight aircraft to successfully move narcotics and who knows well, what else across the southwest border, as well as the problem that we have with tunneling and other types of innovative ways that people are coming across the border. This debate, though, should also include an examination of potential flaws in our immigration system, especially the process and, pr and procedures relating to asylum requests. We need to be able to look at, at visa reform. We are told that 40 percent of the people that come here, that are here illegally, came here legally, but also need to look at how asylum requests and the surge that we are seeing in that are being processed and what we can do as a nation to, to uh, combat the fraud that may be out there but to look seriously at how we do this, uh, do this process. The Immigration and Nationality Act, known, commonly known as INA, codified requirements defining the process and standards for the adjudication of asylum requests. Throughout the years, some alterations to the INA have been made through the Illegal Immigrant Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act of 1996, as well as the Real ID Act of 2005. Both predate my participation here in this, in this Congress. These laws are based on the notion that foreign nationals seeking asylum in the United States must demonstrate a well-founded fear that if they return home, they will perse be persecuted based on one of five characteristics, race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group, or political opinion. It is important to welcome foreign nationals into the United States making legitimate claims about being persecuted or tortured in their home country, but also adhering to the U.S. Code. To obtain asylum in the United States, applicants can pursue their claims in two ways, through affirmative or defensive process. And we may get into the details and specificity of those, but I, at this time I will not go through the details of trying to explain that. USCIS estimate, estimates indicate that it will receive a total of 28,679 credible fear requests in fiscal year 2013. This is a 434 percent increase over the last five years. The majority of credible fear requests appear to be coming from countries such as El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. Individuals from these countries const constitute roughly two-thirds of all credible fear interviews in fiscal year 2013. It has re been reported by the New York Times that USCIS's asylum request process has been exploited by potentially thousands of fraudulent applications. As reported in the, in the Times in December 2012, 26 individuals spread across 10 law firms were indicted for helping Chinese immigrants submit false asylum claims. These 10 law firms were responsible for filing more than 1,900 claims. Even with such numbers, fraudulent claims processed at these law firms represent only a small portion of the potentially fraudulent asylum requests. There have been major cases in Sacramento, San Diego. And most notably, what happened in the Boston bombing situation, which we want to dive into at, at, at this hearing today. On April 2, uh, myself and uh, Congressman Bentavoglio uh, traveled along with committee staff to Yuma, Nogales, Arizona, to assess the Federal Government's most recent efforts to secure the border. I visited the Eloy Detention Facility in Arizona. It was brief, briefed by prison and ICE officials. The, the committee learned that the individuals classified as OTMs, uh, again, also known as other than Mexicans, accounted for 900-plus inmates from 60 different countries of the approximately 1,500 in the Eloy detention facility alone. This is one of, I think, at least nine facilities that we have there in that area. Based on our conversation with CBP officers in Yuma and Nogales, there appears to be an increasingly trend of OTMs moving across the southwest border. A significant portion of the OTMs are coming from Latin America, including Guatemala and Honduras, in addition to India and China and other notable countries. The increase of OTMs appears to be correlated with some of the potential weaknesses in the legal immigration system. All of these statistics, personal accounts and news reports point to an alarming trend that suggests there may be serious flaws in our legal immigration system, 
in addition to showing where some of the newest threats may be emerging. <clears throat> During my time there, I went to Phoenix, where I learned that uh, people that are trying to go through this asylum process, uh, when they are granted a court date, if you were to go through that process now, I was told that the court date that they would get would be in 2020. 2020. That doesn't seem to work for anybody. We have three administrative judges dealing with thousands of cases on their dockets, now, something that we may not be able to direct, deal with directly here in this hearing, but another component of how we fix legal immigration. Today, we hope not only to discuss, discuss these potential flaws to the system, but solutions to ensure a more efficient system. We are the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. I want to emphasize that I commend and support the hard work and dedication of our law enforcement officers, those at CBP, ICE, USCIS, the men and women who are working in the offices from the administrative posts to those doing the interviewing. They do a very difficult but very important job. I look forward to hearing from our witness and a productive conversation about improving the asylum application process. 